Welcome to our home happy hour fundraiser for the CDOC Society. We are so excited that you're here with us tonight. And thank you so much for that beautiful song by Tara Craig to get us started. She's one of our monthly CDOC supporters and clearly a very talented vocalist. So thank you so much, Tara. And everyone, my name is Leanne Gilmer. I'm regional director for the CDOC Society. And we are joined by our full team tonight, some of whom you'll see, and some who are working behind the scenes, really running this show. So those are Erica Nilsson and Michelle Homewood. And thanks so much for joining us for this night to benefit Sea Doc Society and our work to heal the Salish Sea. Tonight, we're coming to you live from our homes to yours. And I'm so happy to be joined tonight by our board members, Kevin Campion and Jess Newley. So hey, Jess, how's everything over on San Juan Island? Hey, Leanne, everything's great here. My home island of San Juan, so happy to be here tonight. Thank you. And welcome to everybody online joining us from near and far. It's awesome that we be, can be together even in this virtual space tonight. Actually, it'd be great to hear where you're tuning in from tonight. If you want to put that in the chat, um, please do now. And please remember to switch it from panelists and hosts to everyone so we can all see him. And hey, Kevin, back on land for the event, I see. Uh, yeah, Jess, I am back on shore after some pretty sweet uh, sailing adventures on the Sailor Sea this summer, and uh, I'm just, I'm so stoked to be here uh, celebrating 22 years of the Sea Doc Society, and uh, just uh, lovely to see everyone out there in the, the virtual space tonight. So, do uh, you guys all get that wine? I did. It's good. Uh, yeah, so just thanks to our to our uh, sponsors and supporters at Compass Wines in Anacortes and uh, Corte Terre in, in Oregon for making that wine registration option available again. That's really sweet uh, and very helpful for us. And then a huge thanks to uh, to Mr. T for creating us uh, just awesome insulated mugs or mugs, wine glass, insulated wine glasses. Uh, but uh, no matter what beverage you guys are drinking out there, what your snack situation is, get yourself comfy for a for a fun-filled evening of celebrating and learning. So Leanne, uh, what's in store this hour? Oh, Kevin, we've got a great hour lined up and I would say they'd work as mugs. So, you know, any beverage you wanna put in here, but tonight we're going to be giving you everything that CDOC does best. And that is science, education, and a whole lot of fun. So thanks again to our wine sponsors and thanks also to our sponsors, Apple State Vinegar, Patagonia, and our local Lopezian author, Iris Gravel, that I just saw in the chat for donating our trivia prizes. These are some really great prizes tonight, so you are not going to want to miss trivia a little bit later on. So tonight, we really chose this theme of home because it spoke to us in so many ways. And I'm sure when you first heard the theme, you came up with your own memories and ideas of what home means to you. Maybe it's a place, maybe it's a feeling, or I'm sure for all of us here tonight, it's a feeling about a place. And so many of us have spent more times in our homes these past few years than we probably ever imagined. And it's been a great reminder to find inspiration in the world around us and especially in our natural environment. So when we think of that home too, we have to think about the plants and the animals that rely on the health of this home too. So tonight what we're gonna be doing is celebrating those homes and celebrating all of the work that CDOC does to improve the health of our home for everyone who depends on it, including all of you. So it's so much fun to see some of where you are tuning in. I think I saw in Montana earlier, Oregon. Thanks so much for being Lodi, here. Lodi, California, I'm seeing on nice. there. Another San Juan Islander. Thanks, Marcy. Yeah, I saw cool. someone from Lopez. From, from Orcas Island as well. Uh, oh, Laura from San Diego. Hey, Laura. Huntington Beach. That's awesome. Uh, well, thank you all for sharing where, where home is for you. It, it's just cool to see that coming in and just, you know, 
it, it warms all of us to, to feel how, how far our reach is and, and know that there's people up and down the coast and east and west part of this country thinking about the Sailor Sea and Sea Dog. So uh, speaking of home, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, folks that have been here since time immemorial. And, you know, I think I you know, speak for, for CDOC when I say that uh, a land acknowledgement is over Zoom is, is the least we can do uh, to, to recognize the, the folks that have been here for so long. Um, but it's a starting place and, you know, we hope that, that it can serve as a reminder to do the most we can do in, in this work. So uh, let's begin our time together this evening by acknowledging that although we are not collectively together, our focus is on and the work we do takes place on the lands and waters of the Coast Salish people. As visitors here, we'd like to express a commitment to listening to and learning from Native people and a dedication to the necessary project of reimagining the social contracts between Native people and the rest of us who have shown up here through different uh, means to these Native nations. So uh, thank you all for that. And uh, it's, it's so cool for me to be up here with like two of my closest friends uh, getting to do this. And of course, the, the rest of the CDOC folks. Uh, that the CDOC team doesn't know this, but my, my prep for tonight was listening to a bunch of the Pot of Orcas podcasts today. So I feel like I got to spend a little time with Justin even beforehand. So, but yeah, uh, thanks Leanne. And, and Jess and I have had some excellent adventures in the past, both sailing and on land. And there's one that I like, a fav favorite story I like to tell where Jess took me actually snorkeling in the Cedar River to go see Chinook salmon very firsthand. Jess, are you still hitting the rivers in the fall to go look for salmon? I am actually. Yes, of course. Um, you know, I have random salmon laying around too. That's kind of what I do. Um, but yeah, getting ready to go up there soon. And uh, as you know, that's one of my favorite things to do is go snorkeling and document salmon up in their home habitat and their in their home rivers. Um, it's actually a big passion of mine. Some might say an obsession, um, but it's definitely something I love to do. And actually started doing that when I was in grad school in, up, um, the North, in the North Cascades National Park in the Skagit River. Um, so yeah, I'd be out there after school every day or on the weekends, just going underwater with those beautiful, beautiful fish any chance I got. And I actually made it a kind of a goal of mine um, and a project to document all five species of salmon in the Skagit River. How did you remember what five species of salmon were in the Skagit? Good question. Leanne, do you know this trick? How to remember the five species? No, I don't think I've ever seen this trick, Jess. All right, well, I'll teach you and everyone at home too. If you're interested, go ahead and put your hand up like this. Okay, and we'll start with our thumb for chum salmon. So that's how you remember chum with your thumb and your, your uh, this finger, what are we, your pointer finger for sockeye salmon, like you're gonna sock an eye out. <laughs> and then uh, our largest middle finger is for to represent the largest species of salmon, which is Chinook or King salmon, which our Southern residents depend on. And then we have our ring finger where we put our shiny silver rings on and that's for coho or, or silver salmon. And then of course, last but not least, our pinky for pink salmon. Yeah, my favorite so trick. Cool. There's so much cool things though to learn about salmon and their life cycle. And actually let's do that now. Let's take a look at this video that talks more about that and actually has some of my underwater footage from the Skagit River. At the end of their life, adult salmon will swim hundreds of miles up the same rivers and streams they were born in to lay or fertilize eggs. Just before a new generation of babies is born, the adult salmon's carcass becomes food for the eagles, bears, and trees that call the forest their home. The new babies then make their journey downriver until they finally hit the salt water of the Salish Sea, where they'll live out most of their lives. They will travel thousands of miles feeding on zooplankton and small forage fish like sand lance and herring. They will dodge predators like southern resident killer whales, whose future depends on a healthy Chinook salmon population. To put it simply, without salmon, we won't have southern resident orcas. If the salmon survives into adulthood, it will once again return to the river and make the same long freshwater trek that its parents did, 
years earlier. There, in its home stream, it will breed, die, nourish the forest, and start the whole cycle all over again. That is such a cool video, and you might recognize the narrator. That's the voice of our communications and marketing manager, Justin Cox. So he's also the host of our Pot of Orcas podcast that Kevin was talking about. We're just starting season two, and you'll be hearing more from Justin a little bit later. And, you know, when we talk about the Salish Sea, we really have to talk about the importance of salmon. In fact, the Coast Salish have told us that the indigenous people in the Pacific Northwest are known as the salmon people because salmon is and has always been vitally important. So the salmon coming home to the rivers is part of that life cycle that Justin just showed in that video. And there's an awesome opportunity coming up this weekend. So if you're in Seattle, like I am from my home, I hope you'll join me at Pier 62 this Saturday, the 17th, because Salmon Homecoming Alliance has a full day of activities to celebrate the salmon coming home. And uh, we'll go ahead and drop a link in the chat. I hope to see you out there on the waterfront to celebrate salmon coming home. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bummed. I'm going to miss it. It sounds really cool. And, you know, well, I grew up uh, just north of Seattle and we had actually a creek that came through our backyard where we had a uh, coho salmon that would come back every fall. And it was like, it was a really cool part of my childhood and part of my family and just kind of like punctuated the seasons for us. Um, so have fun there this weekend. But speaking of salmon for all of you, are you guys ready for a little trivia? This is the first of a handful of trivia questions. And we, one, want to test your knowledge, but two, you can win a prize. And we have some sweet prizes from our sponsors. For this first trivia question, the prize is from Apple State Vinegar, our sponsors at Apple State Vinegar. That you can get some of their sweet shrubs and, of course, some apple cider vinegar, along with Writer in a Life Fest, Writer in a Life Fest the book by Iris Ravel from uh, Lopez Island, I believe. Uh, so you, that sweet uh, prize pack and the book, you're gonna answer in the chat and the first correct answer in the chat wins the prize and Erica will be our, our judge for who gets the correct answer first. So fingers ready, chat's open. All right, the first question is, how many species of salmon did Jess say can be found in the Skagit River? Madison? Yep. I saw it. It was Madison Churchill. Oh, wow, they're good. Or I'm yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, Madison. And Madison actually has been helping us out uh, on our social media as well. So uh, thank you, Madison, for tuning in and actually for winning too. Congrats. Uh, we'll get it to you soon. Oh, you are all really fast. And just a reminder right now, I think the default in the chat has it set to hosts and panelists. If you could click that drop down so it says everyone, that way we can all talk to each other and, uh, and we'll definitely see your fast answers if uh, Erica and Michelle have these eagle eyes. Um, they're certainly quicker than I am. But uh, so getting back to our program tonight, as you know, tonight's all about home and CDOC's commitment to heal and preserve this special place for all of the animals who live above and below the water, but also for all of the people here too. So if you want to be a part of protecting the Salish Sea by investing in CDOC science and education, we'll be asking for your help Help a little bit later tonight. You'll have the option to click on our donation link to make your gift right away online. And our board member, Ashley Ebler, who is working behind the scenes, will drop that link in the chat and it's going to be active all night long. So thanks so much, Ashley. And also, you'll be able to use this chat if you'd like to make a pledge. So for example, you could say, hey, I want to pledge $1,000 or $100 or $10. Please go ahead and bill me. And Michelle or Erica will follow up with you after the event. But just a little Zoom housekeeping here. If you would like that pledge to be anonymous, then what we would need you to do is to click on that little drop down, make sure it goes to hosts and panelists. And that way, only the people who you see on the screen are gonna see that message. So in that case, just let us know what amount you'd like to pledge and that you wish to remain anonymous and we'll take care of that. Awesome, yeah, tonight's one of my favorite nights of the year for supporting CDOC and being with this wonderful community. It's really cool. So thanks everyone in advance for investing in what you love, the Salish Sea. All right, we've seen some places that salmon call home. Um, what home are we gonna explore next? 
Well, Jess, you know that the Salish Sea is full of superlatives, and one of those is the biggest octopus in the world, the giant Pacific octopus. And we were lucky enough to get a glimpse inside one of their homes not too long ago. So let's go ahead and take a look. The largest octopus species in the world lives right here in the Salish Sea. It makes its home inside rocky caves and secluded spots where its squishy body is safe from predators. The giant Pacific octopus has three hearts, nine brains, eight arms, and up to 2,240 suckers. These intelligent invertebrates have a siphon that not only spews ink, but also helps it swim and plays a role in caring for eggs. When the occasional semi-charismatic megafauna decides to come down and pay a visit, a curious octopus might throw a fist bump. At the end of her life, a female octopus will settle into her home and lay between 100,000 and 400,000 eggs. From those eggs, thousands of larvae will hatch, but only one or two will survive to become mature octopuses. You can find the giant Pacific octopus throughout the Pacific Rim of the western coastline of North America. And if you're a diver, you can find one right here at home in the Salish Sea. Hello, I'm Justin. I lead communications for the Sea Doc Society, and by that, I mean I play with clay and green screens, toys, stuff like that. Um, of course, I'm joking, but only slightly. The Sea Doc Society's mission is to ensure the health of marine wildlife and their ecosystems through science and education. Funding and conducting research is core to that mission, but it doesn't stop there. And in a lot of senses, it actually starts there. If we want to build a movement and create change, we have to activate the 8 million people who call the Salish Sea home, ignite the imaginations of children, and get peer-reviewed science in the hands of policymakers. It's a big job that requires long-term dedication and persistence. Now, bear with me for just one second, but it's not unlike molding a cute little Chinook salmon out of Play-Doh and then moving it one millimeter at a time, snapping a new photo for each small movement. Taken individually, those photos don't tell much of a story, but string them all together, and now we got a salmon swimming upstream. We're all working together to ensure a healthy home, and we're in it for the long haul. Just imagine that salmon swimming hundreds of miles upstream to create the next generation of its species. There's some real inspiration to be found in that, and that's why storytelling is a huge part of what we do at Sea Doc Society. Speaking of which, let's pass it over to Bob Friel to hear about the latest with Salish Sea Wild. Bob is an award-winning author, photographer, and filmmaker, and he's been working with CDOC for over a decade. But that's definitely not him. But I know he's out there in the field somewhere. Bob? <laughs> that sounds like him, but that's not him. Ah, oh, there he is. Hey, Bob. Oh, hey, Justin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Salish Sea Wild Studios. This is where we film a lot of the underwater scenes that you've, uh, that you've seen in the show. And uh, yeah, you know, once I get Joe Gatos and six or seven sea lions in here, it gets a little cozy, but, uh, but we make do. Uh, today I was just over uh, scouting out some new locations by the, uh, by the massage jets. Hey, you know, while you're here, since, you know, Joe tends to hog all the camera time, I'd love to take the opportunity to thank each and every CDOC supporter. Without your dedication, without your donations, we couldn't produce projects like Sailor Sea Wild. So I, I just want to say thank you. It is so gratifying to us to see the effect that the series has had. We hear from so many kids and young people uh, who it's really sparked a love of our local wildlife. And, uh, and we know that they are going to carry on the crucial mission of CDOC for generations to come. And we constantly hear from viewers who tell us how much they appreciate seeing good science presented in an entertaining way, helping to spread that conservation message about healing the Salish Sea. And I gotta tell you, the entire audience seems to love seeing Joe get bit by wildlife as much as I do. So with your ongoing support, we'll continue to find fun and exciting ways to tell important stories about the Salish Sea. I've got some ideas for some upcoming stuff. 
I think we're going to test whether Joe can swim faster than a shark, climb a tree quicker than a grizzly bear, and outrun a sea wolf on the beach. So stay tuned. Whoops, gotta go. There's a giant Pacific octopus in here. So thanks again. Thank you for supporting Sea Doc, for supporting Sailor Sea Wild. We're going to keep doing this important stuff with your support. And let's turn it back to our great hosts, Leanne, Jess, and Kevin. But before we do that, Justin, hey, let's roll this sneak peek of an upcoming episode of Sailor Sea Wild that'll be out in just a few weeks. Thanks again, everybody. Okay, I'm locked and loaded. We got this. Wait, you see that? Yeah. Yep, that's our guy. Just, just on this side. That's our guy. So start to turn to the right. We're gonna put him on this side of the boat. This here. I got the flipper. Get up here. Somewhere take it. Okay. Okay, Lily, move him back. We're good. We got you, man. We got you. We're friends. <laughs> okay, so Lily, what's gonna happen is as this thing comes out. As he comes out, he's going to want to swim away. You just push that hook straight down into the water so he doesn't take it. Copy? Copy that? Copy. I'm going to hold him until he starts breathing more. Get ready. Get ready. I want him to be more awake before we let him go. Whoa. Seriously? That's where he's going to end it? Oh, Bob, you're leaving us hanging. Dang. Well, uh, I can't wait to see the rest of that episode. Uh, but just Ew. incredible how Bob's able to be out there and capture that, the whole team, uh, you know, disentangling a giant stellar sea lion from, from marine debris at Whale Rocks. That's very cool. And yeah, I'm going to tune in. Uh, and yeah, that just thanks, Bob, for all, all that you do for Sea Doc And uh want to say happy birthday to Bob too. It happens to be Bob Phil's birthday. Happy birthday, so, Bob. Happy birthday. Bob wherever, I hope you are somewhere very comfortable and enjoying yourself. Uh, but yeah, just thank you and happy birthday. And uh, great to see Justin on there too. Uh, you know, the voice of the podcast and, and all the cool claymation and all that. So, um, so it is time for another round of trivia. Uh, this time the prize is going to be an insulated wine picnic backpack nice. and a uh, another copy of Iris's book, Rider in a Life Vest. Um, I see a pretty rad afternoon outing here of some uh, wine. Maybe walk out somewhere nice wherever you're at and, and sip some wine and read. Sounds good to me. Uh, am I allowed to answer my, probably can't answer my own question, but okay. Is everyone ready? Chat's open. Okay. The question is, how many hearts do octopus have? Ooh. Ooh, lots of answers. I love seeing the answers before you're done finishing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who came in first? I can't mm -hmm. believe this. Morgan Arrington, I don't know if you can win anymore. This is the third year in a row. A <laughs> she has trivia. won trivia. She is fast on the keyboard. So uh, Morgan, you know the drill. We'll reach out to you after the, uh, the event, congrats. <laughs> yeah, hope to see you again in the office this time to pick up your prize. Um, so yeah, and and you know, I love that both the giant Pacific octopus and the elusive Bob Friel never fail to capture the imagination of people of all ages. And tonight, I just want to give a shout out to someone else who has captured the imagination and inspired young people to learn about, connect with, and protect the Salish Sea. And that is Mira Lutz Castle, who is here with us tonight as always giving her support. So back in 2018, CDOC set out to develop an elementary school curriculum as a companion to explore the Salish Sea, the nature guidebook for kids written by Dr. Joe Gatos and CDOC board member, Audrey Benedict. 
And over the last four years, Mira has worked with a team of diverse collaborators to create a hands-on play-space curriculum for fifth graders that gets kids outside on the beach doing real science. And CDOC has now donated more than 4,000 of these books to schools in need for students to use. We've provided training to more than 700 educators and piloted the Explore the Salish Sea curriculum in more than 200 schools and organizations, reaching thousands of students on both sides of the border throughout Washington State and up in BC. And this has really inspired those students in science learning. And and we are thrilled to announce tonight a new partner that will be the new home for this completed curriculum, and that is the Pacific Education Institute. Their focus on teacher training and outdoor learning is the perfect home for this curriculum that Mira has developed with so much love. And now Explore the Salish Sea can reach thousands of students every year with that seamless transition because PEI, Pacific Education Institute, will work with local community partners just like Mira had built with our Salish Sea Heroes program so that those students in their culminating projects can take action to protect this place that they too call home. So Mira, we love you. We are so grateful for your work that has made an impact in the lives of so many. And really, we can't thank you enough. So thank you, Mira, and congratulations on this amazing body of work. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Mira. Um, and I was lucky enough to work with many of those young Salish Sea heroes. And boy, is it super inspiring. All right. So we've seen salmon and their complex system of homes. We've seen octopus dens, their gardens, even maybe an octopus teacher or two. What's next? Any guesses? Harry, what are we, what are we exploring? Marble neuralettes. If it, if I had my druthers, yeah. I guess Kevin probably know. Kevin would probably like us to do something about the North Pacific right oh, whale, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll bank on him for that. So you know there are so many species that we could, so many stories that we could tell about the species in the Salish Sea and how it's home to untold numbers of plants and kelp, more than three thousand invertebrates. 261 species of fishes, 172 bird species, and 37 mammal species, and not to mention the nearly 8 million people here too. Uh, okay, numbers lady. Uh, where'd you get all those numbers anyways? <laughs> You're gonna put me on the spot like that, Kevin? Yeah. Not cool. I just, I just felt like they sounded impressive. I don't know. They do. No, just kidding. Of course, CDOC, as Joe liked to says, we deal in real facts, not feel facts. So CDOC did the research to count these species who live in and depend on the health of this ecosystem. And if you're so inclined, we're going to go ahead and drop the links to those publications in the chat. And just like all of our publications, those are free and openly accessible to the public so that everyone can learn from CDOC's research. And also tonight, we wanted to end our exploration of home on an uplifting note. So this is a success story about how we nearly lost an iconic species in the Salish Sea, but it has made a truly remarkable comeback, and that is the bald eagle. Bald eagles build their homes in tall trees throughout the United States, Canada, and parts of northern Mexico and they're a common sight right here in the Salish Sea. Their nests are huge, some of the biggest of any bird species. A nest can weigh more than 2,000 pounds, which is why they typically seek out strong, mature trees. Bald eagles have excellent eyesight, and they can drop in on prey from 1,000 feet in the air. They are skilled hunters and opportunistic scavengers, feeding on fish, seabirds, and other marine and terrestrial animals. These iconic raptors mate for life and return to their same nest year after year. In the 1900s, bald eagle populations crashed due to hunting, poisoning, and insecticides like DDT. Despite being the United States national bird, they were thought of as vermin. Thanks to regulations built on years of science, much like the science we're talking about here tonight, the population has rebounded and represents a great conservation success story. Western Washington and the Salish Sea are home to the largest population of bald eagles in the Pacific Northwest. If you spot a shock of white atop a green tree line, you're likely seeing a bald eagle perched in its home, watching the world go by in high definition. 
Yeah, that, that bald eagle episode is one of my favorite episodes of Sailor Sea Wild, and I, I love the hopeful message that it, you know, like when I was a kid growing up on the shores of the Sailor Sea, and and I, I bet a bunch of you out there can remember the same, where seeing a bald eagle was a really big deal, a very special thing, and and you know maybe like once a week or something like that. And now like seeing a bald eagle is still a big deal and a very special thing. But I you know I think I could probably walk down the block and find one in the next ten minutes. And it's just really cool to know that that science and and, and policy can actually recover species and, and it works. This this model really works. So so speaking of eagles, last trivia question of the night. So open your chats. Fingers ready. Crack their knuckles here. Get some speedy answers. Anyone going to try and answer before I ask the question? <laughs> Morgan? Like some sort of Johnny Carson kind of guess might I'm going to. Um, okay, so the question is, well, the prize is, first off, the super cool Patagonia backpack and beanie. Uh, for those of us south of the border. And if you live north of the border, it's a really cool backpack and toque that you could win. And then another copy, thank you, Iris, for all these copies of books. Uh, I wish I could answer because I want to read the book. Uh, another copy of Iris's book, Writer in a Life Vest. So toque and or beanie and a backpack and the book. Eagle themed questions. So get your eagle answers ready. Question is, how much can an eagle's nest weigh? <laughs> No, no, I'm calling, I'm calling some cheaters here. I think so. There are a lot of people anticipating this one. Yeah, they must have been watching the videos looking for those numbers. I know. Okay, we're making them too easy for you guys now. All right, I see you all in your chat. We're going to have to have a conversation offline. We'll reach out. I think the first person did it, but well before you even talked about the prize, Kevin. So... Okay. All right, we're gonna think about this one. You all are very smart. Thank you for participating. <laughs> yeah, and seriously, was Joe trying to get in there too? Was he one of the ones that I comes saw to Joe's name go through there? I did too. What? Even Joe? <laughs> yeah. All right. Oy vey. All right. You can't, you can't this is all it's all off the rails at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I I I can't help myself. I just love eagles, and I love that Patagonia stuff. I just saw yesterday, thank you, Audrey, for sending me the story that Yvonne Chouinard sold the company for conservation, for fighting climate change. And of course I love eagles, right? And, and I love that we use that story tonight as, as Leanne was saying, as an example of how science can tell us when there's a problem with a species, it can tell us what that problem is, what we need to do. We move that into policy, into action, and we get recovery. And, and that's just a really good thing to remember. It gives us hope that what we're doing makes a difference. And I like that, that we have the octopus there too. The octopus, like many species in the Salish Sea, is the bomb. It's awesome and they're doing well. And that's our reminder that this place is worth saving, right? And then of course, we have the salmon. And the salmon are not doing well. And that's our reminder that we still have a lot of work to do to save this place. It's a great place. We can make it a lot better. And when we bring back salmon, we help those 138 different vertebrate species. We help all of the insects and invertebrates. We help the trees. We help the people. We help our economy. That's why we're here, to make it better for everybody. So sorry I voted. Thanks for that awesome recap of everything we've been talking about in the homes tonight, Joe. And I really love that we ended our species uh, kind of spotlight and exploration on a positive note, showing that change can be made through science and education, which is exactly what CDOC and all of our supporters here tonight aim to do. Study species in decline, translate the science, educate policy and change makers, and affect positive conservation outcomes. Absolutely, Jess. And you know, at CDOC, our motto is people and science healing the sea. And we mean it because without all of you here tonight supporting the science that's being conducted, there's no way we could have accomplished as much as we have in the past 22 years since we were founded in 2000 as a program of UC Davis's School of Veterinary Medicine. Over the years, you have contributed to positive changes for the Salish Sea. And we know that because 
It probably comes as no surprise to you, but we've actually done research on our own research. So we found that 40, more than 40% of the 150 plus projects that CDOC has funded and conducted have already resulted in positive conservation changes. And we know that science is a long game. So we're going to see the positive impacts of all of this research over the long run too. So we're going to see even more good come from this work over the past 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Just a reminder that, you know, science by itself doesn't necessarily mean action. And that same study you were talking about, Leanne, you know, we always strive to publish science and peer reviewed publications. But we found in that study that a publication by itself doesn't make positive in conservation change. We need to do other things. And so that's really what we try and do is we try and get that science and sure it's used by people who make decisions. That's all of us as private citizens, and that's senators, representatives, managers, everybody. So we wanna do the whole thing, not just produce the science. So Joe, we, we're here, one, to celebrate these species and CDOC success over, over the last year, right. the last 22 years. Uh, we're also here to make money, right? Like with this, the, we, we need to fund the work we do. So if I had, a, I don't, but let's say I had a spare fifty thousand dollars lying around. Uh, what could that? What could that uh, fund at CDOC? Yeah, I mean, fifty thousand dollars can can make a huge difference. It can fund an entire project, one of those hundred and fifty projects that Leanne was just talking about. It can fund an entire project that helps us understand something, not just for the fact of understanding it, but to make change. So let me give you an example. A couple of years ago, some people came to us and said, "Look." You know, there's a big resurgence among uh, tribes, First Nations, and other people who want to collect and harvest kelp. But is that kelp safe to eat? We didn't know. And we had to say, look, we don't know. When we did a literature search, we saw all kinds of contaminants in kelp around the world. We didn't have those data for the Salish Sea. And so CDOC funded a project, thanks to donors like you, we funded Jenny Hahn at Western Washington University to go out, work with those tribes and First Nations, at their traditional collecting areas, get samples, test those samples. And what she found is that kelp is safe to eat, except in areas where we already know it's contaminated, like Esquimalt Harbor or Victoria Harbor. And that's really important. And we didn't just stop there, right? Jenny went back, talked to the First Nations, talked to the tribes, made sure they understood the implications for them and their harvest. And that free peer review publication is going to be coming out at the end of the month. So $50,000 can buy a lot. Absolutely, Joe. And uh, we have some donations already coming in. And a big thank you to the Donald family and the Rhodes family and the WWW Foundation at the $50,000 level. Wow, uh, I know awesome. both of those families love science and love to support uh, that kind of work. So thank yeah, you so all much. for that. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, that's so cool and inspiring. Um, and Leanne, what about $25,000 tonight? What can that create? Yeah, just $25,000 is what we need to make positive changes for our home, the Salish Sea. And I'm actually really excited about this level because just like we've done that research that we talked about, to find out which projects were most effective in making positive conservation changes, an investment of $25,000 is going to help us to get even more effective at being that bridge between science and policy. We want to make sure that we have the right data in the hands of the right people at the right time so that we can really make change. Because like Joe was saying, science itself isn't enough. We have to get that in the right hands of the right people. And so this is an investment that CDOC is going to be working on in this next year. It's going to make us even better at what we do to heal the Salish Sea. So that's a, that's an example of what $25,000 can help us do tonight. Absolutely. And at this level, our uh, lovely board member, Audrey Benedict and the Benedict Family Foundation. Hi, Audrey in the chat. Thank you, Audrey. Uh, thank as well you, as the Audrey. Rolf family at this level. So thank oh, you awesome. both thank so you much, Lee and Lee Stu. Stu. Thank you. We really yeah, appreciate that's it. That's really, really amazing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, Audrey and Lance, too. The very cool. Man, I got to hang out with Audrey in person for the first time since the start of COVID this spring. Very, very cool to get to see you, Audrey. Thank you for that donation. 
Uh, what about ten thousand dollars? What's ten ten thousand do for right? Sea? So ten ten thousand dollars helps us tell the story of the sailor sea, its amazing wildlife, and how our science really works and what we learn. And we need that. We don't want to just do the science. We need to tell the story so it inspires people. And ten thousand dollars would be an amazing gift. It would help fund an episode of Sailor Sea Wild, like Bob Friel was talking about, or it helped fund the award-winning Pod of Orcas podcast that Justin has put together. You know, we want to, we don't want to just do the science. We want to share the stories and inspire people to join in, to take action, to make this place even better than it is right now. And you can do yeah. that $1,000. Absolutely. And Joe, just to, to chime in on that, a lot of the people here tonight, so a lot of you out there have actually found out about Sea Doc Society from the podcast. Right. So right. thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for joining us tonight and welcome to Team Sea Doc. And I also just wanna give a quick shout out. Erica mentioned her a little bit earlier, but our social media coordinator, Madison Churchill has done a lot of work promoting this event as well as all of our science and education on social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook. So that really helps to get the word out there. Like you were saying, Joe, this is what $10,000 can do to really share that knowledge about the Salish Sea with a broad community. Yeah, and I wanna add a little story. Uh, I got a sweet uh, little letter from two little girls who just moved to Tacoma from Montana within the last year. And they wrote in telling us that they've been using Salish Sea Wild to learn all about their new home because there isn't salt water in Montana. So they had a lemonade stand and raised oh. money to say thank you and sent in a little donation. So sweet. sweet. Um, at this level, uh, a lot has happened. Um, first of all, to uh, the English Family Foundation. Uh, oh. Thank they you. just, it's all going really fast. Um, they came in at this level. I also had an email come in and I couldn't ask if it, they wanted anonymous or not. So uh, I have two anonymous donations at the $10,000 level. So thank you so much to uh, all of those who came in at this uh, level tonight. Absolutely. And, you know, just to add a little honey to the pot right now, Team CDOC is in the middle of 17 days of intensive killer whale field research. And so we're out there every day. Joe had to take a break to come in, which of course he was happy to do. Thanks so much for joining us, Joe. Yeah, and uh, we're out there, we're out there leveraging cutting edge technology. So we're <laughs> using drones, infrared cameras, and other non-invasive sampling techniques in our effort to save the critically endangered Southern resident killer whales. And a few days ago, the team had an incredible encounter when the the magnificent, really magnificent 31-year-old male, L85, also known as Mystery, pulled up. So Erica, can you pull that photo up real quick? Oh my goodness. It's just, it's gorgeous. And so Mystery made a very close approach to check out the research vessel just before sunset, as you can see. And Joe stopped field work just long enough to catch this magical moment. And as a special thank you tonight, to everyone who step up right now to support important research like this in a big way, we're actually gonna create a limited number of art prints of this photo. So each one is going to be signed by the scientist, <laughs> the author and accidental artist himself, <laughs> Joe Gatos. So these prints will be made exclusively for those who, ten who donate $10,000 and above tonight as really a beautiful reminder of why we're all involved in this crucial work. So I'm just, that is just so gorgeous, Joe. Yeah, what a special yeah. photo and special experience, I'm sure. It's really cool. Yeah, it was amazing. And thanks to digital photography, it can make even somebody like me be able to take a decent photo. So <laughs> I wish I had your skills, Jess, but every once in a while you get lucky. All right. So Leah, what about $5,000 tonight? Yeah, Jess, $5,000, you know, when we think about all of the challenges facing the health of the Salish Sea and the urgency that we're facing these challenges, we have to think about collaboration and creativity. It's going to take a lot of people with a lot of different backgrounds, experience levels, perspectives to come together to create solutions. So a gift of $5,000 is going to help us to make connections. And 
as much as we do love being in our living rooms, it's really nice that things have finally started to open back up. So a gift of $5,000 is going to help us bring science advisors together to collaborate on solutions to critical challenges facing the Salish Sea. It's going to help us connect with partners across the region, policymakers, resource managers, agencies, tribal and First Nations leaders, scientists of all fields, so that really we can collaborate on holistic and really timely approaches to the challenges facing the health of the Salish Sea. Uh, I see Erica pop up. I know. I <laughs> didn't see Erica. Oh, a deer in headlights. Uh, a lot of action at this level. I saw uh, John and Allison Brick. Thank you so oh, thank you. much. Oh, uh, Rochelle awesome. and Corey, thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I hope I'm seeing everyone. And if if I miss you, know that I'm trying real hard and we will reach out absolutely after the event as well to say thank, thank you, you for so all much. your support. And John Brick, I saw your comment about eagles also feeding on my hand. So maybe <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> to Joe, there's only four species of salmon in the Skagit River. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lost one finger. Sorry. Oh, I found two more. Uh, the Miravolds and uh, uh, Boris Luderhan. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, and another anonymous donor. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, sorry. I'm done. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. Excellent. That's so awesome. And and thanks to all of you and Rochelle and Corey. I think you guys just bought a new boat. So. Yeah. Shout out to that. Congrats. And I want to hear all about it, but obviously not right now. Uh, <laughs> so when I mentioned $50,000, I said spare $50,000. And I realized that that no one's got spare money kicking around, right? This is all like valuable resources that, that we think about how we invest. And it's really cool to think about how how you are choosing to invest in CDOC and, and the Salish Sea. So what about $2,500? I'm going to pause you all right there real quick. We've got a special, special, I could say it, challenge at this level, the $2,500 level. We have an anonymous donor who would like to match five people at this level for a total of $12,500. And if we reach that match, that will fund a year of our boating program. Yeah. yeah. Ah, that's amazing. And, you know, I mean, we think about boats, uh, you know, people enjoy time on boats, but boats are fundamental to our operations and keeping them safe and keeping them in good working condition. It's critical what we do. We use them to respond to entangled animals like you saw. We're out diving for research. We're traveling to meeting just about everything that we do. And we're super grateful to our friends down at uh, UC Davis Bodega Bay, James Fitzgerald and the team down there for keeping us safe. And we're really thankful to all of you because it does take money to keep those boats in working order and working order means safe working order. And we need that. So thank you so much for supporting that. Yes, thank you. Uh, I saw Kevin Campion in the chat. Thank you, uh, Kevin, Kevin, for helping us oh, get that match. You. Also, Valerie, I saw you, Valerie and Bill Anders. Thank oh, you thank so you. much for thank that. You. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, as as they roll in, uh, we'll let you know, but thank you so much for helping us uh, try to reach that match tonight. Yeah, I love seeing great. Joe out in the water doing his thing. It's really <laughs> cool on the islands. And I love seeing you out there doing your work, Jess. It's cool. Shout out to Alana, by the way. Yes, um, thank you, Alana. And I know that all any amount tonight is super important and super meaningful, but there's something about the thousand dollar level, right, Joe? Right, $1,000 level is a really special amount. We kind of figure that is the backbone of our supporters. So everybody that gives $1,000 or above every year, we call it our wild lifers. And, and so they keep everything going. They a lot of times have made a commitment to do this year after year. Um, they get special communications from Leanne. They get special opportunities to see our work. But more importantly, they're really the backbone and the bulk of our funding. So $1,000 buys a lot too. Remember, we've talked about access to science. If people can't read science, if they can't get to it, it's not gonna make a change. And so we've made a commitment that all of the science we produce is open access. And $1,000 helps us buy open access publication so people can get it. Science should be free and available to everybody. That's what it's for and that's how it gets used. Uh 
really cute and hopefully I can read it real quick before it goes away in the chat. But Rochelle just said um, her grandkid for her grandkids, Ray Jackson and Carter and Micah. Thank you, CDOT, for making Salish Sea healthy for us to learn and play. So she's giving uh, an extra thank, thousand for her oh, grandkids. Thank you, uh, and we got awesome. an anonymous in. I think I saw Kelly and Jan Nims uh, oh, pledging a thousand. Kelly Janet, yeah. yeah. Kelly is the, the past development officer at UC Davis who taught us so much about mm -hmm. the importance of people supporting the work that you do. So great yeah. to see you out there, Kelly and Janet. Thank you. Oh, and our lovely uh, author. A uh, resident author, Iris, is going to go Iris, ahead and join us at the wildlife level. Thank, you, level. thank you so much. Artie uh, and Chris, too. Artie and Chris, thank oh, you so much. Artie, Artie and Chris. You you guys. Uh, Benny Osborne, former uh, vet med dean. Yeah, Benny was the dean when this program started. Thank you so much, Benny. Has always been a really good supporter in so many ways. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you all so much. I hope I saw everyone. Um, again, if not, we will be reaching out later. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Or coming in there still so good. I, I love that that level is called the wildlife level. Uh, it, you know, we're, I think we're all here for the wildlife, right? We all, like everyone I know through CDOC, whether it's a staff or someone I've met in an event, we all just love animals and the animals in the Salish Sea. And so call them at the wildlife, wildlife level feels pretty inspired. So, uh, and speaking of saving wildlife, what, what does $500 do for, for us at CEDA? Yeah, great question, Kevin. So $500 helps to fund those innovations that we were talking about when Joe got that picture of the killer whales. So some of that killer whale field research, it takes some really, really advanced technology. We're talking drones. We're looking at those infrared cameras to be able to cite inflammation to let us know if there's any skin disease. We also just purchased $2,000 directional micro microphone that lets us listen to killer whale breath cycles from a distance. So it's sort of like a, ste a stethoscope for far away. And so really what this allows us to do is to monitor the individual and population health of wildlife in the Salish Sea with innovative technology. And so all of those $500 gifts add up so that we can have that equipment so that we're doing what we do better and with uh, less, in, less harm to the animals. Hopefully no harm. Uh, and I just want to say, well, thank you at this level for sure. We've got a lot coming in uh, in our normal, the donation link too. And since I can't know if they're anonymous or not, thank you all of you who have been donating that route as well. So I'm just going to go a blanket thank you. Uh, we see you coming in, but since I don't know how to uh, you know, say thanks, I'm just going to say thank you anonymously. <laughs> yeah, so yeah really good. That's cool. And then, of course, I said this before, really any amount is meaningful here tonight. So what about 250, 100, any amount? Yeah, just gifts at all levels truly, truly mean the world to us. So we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about all of the people who are here tonight, all of us in front of the camera, behind the scenes. It's people who power the mission. And our mission at CDOC is to ensure the health of marine wildlife and their ecosystems through science ed and education. So your help at any level adds up to support all of us. And really, we put our hearts and souls into this work. And you make that labor of love possible with your gifts of any amount. Yeah, and and every bit helps. And these these are gifts can be smaller, but they're that doesn't mean that they're not personally significant. And one of the things I think to remember about that is they support the work we do. They also inspire us, right? When we get a school group who's held a bake sale that wants to help the sale of sea and donates, you know, five dollars that they raise from that. That reminds us how important our work is and why we're showing up every day. It reminds us that we have you out there having our back to do the work that we're doing, because this place is important for all of us, uh, no matter how much we can give. And we, we recognize that. So thank you, everybody, for whatever you might be able to do to help us out. And I, I'm just going to call her out. Hopefully she doesn't mind. I won't tell say how much, but uh, I saw my girl Jennifer Olson donated in oh, the, uh, oh, uh, through the through that route. So I want to say hi and thank, thank you. Jen. Thank and you, thank you. Um, yeah, so there there are donations coming in in all different ways. So I just want to say thanks everyone who who took the time to do your donation now. But any time is a good time. Yeah, thank <laughs> you so much. And this is a little off script, everyone. Sorry. No, there's no script. We're not on a script at all. Um, <laughs> of course not. Good, because I didn't no. have one. <laughs> uh, you're right. 
Um, just because I want to get this out here, we took everyone who guessed the correct answer on the last trivia. Uh, Sarah randomized it for us. So Delreen Monticella, I hope I said that right, um, will be reaching out. You won the prize for, oh, so for that last prize. As long as Joe didn't win, good work. Joe, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe does not get that backpack. Hey, can I say one other thing about support? You know, one thing I just, um, I want to remind people that, you know, maybe you don't support today, um, but I, I made a legacy donation to CDOC Society. And so I put them in, you know, when I'm gone, this is so important to me that I want my funds to continue to support all of this work that's going forward. And so that's an option to keep in the back of your mind as well when you're thinking about that. Absolutely. And Joe, there are a few people I know who are joining us tonight who have done that. And it's just such an incredible way to carry on the legacy, to support what you love, and to make this place better for generations to come, generations of people and wildlife. Exactly. Yeah, that's so true. Uh, yeah, and the support oh. is so inspiring. And you know, whatever you can do tonight, everything adds up to support our work here. It's really, really awesome. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, as a program that is funded almost exclusively through private donations from people like you, all of you out there tonight, every one of you are part of Team CDOC and you power everything we do. Your investment in this program is an investment in what you love, the Salish Sea. So whether you call this place home permanently or maybe part of the year, maybe temporarily when you come to visit, whatever reason you have, this place is special to you and we understand that because it's incredibly special to us too. Yeah, sure. And before we close out tonight, I've got two exciting announcements I want to make. First, please save the date. Karen, I saw that you had asked this question earlier in the chat. Please save the date because July 8th, 2023, we are going to be back in person for our wine and sea auction on Orcas Island for the first time since 2019. We hope to see all of you there. I know that we can't wait to give everyone a big hug. So please do mark your calendars for that. Again, July 8th, 2023. So second, thanks to an incredible gift from our founding donor, Kathy Dickinson, we are gonna share some exciting news soon about an opportunity for a permanent home for CDOC Society on Orcas Island. So we are going to need the help of each and every one of you this incredible community that's here tonight to make that possible so that we can all work together to really carry the torch forward for the health of the Salish Sea for decades to come. So we are so excited to share more about this with you. So please do stay tuned. We are going to let you all be the first to know uh, when we've got more to share about that incredible opportunity for a permanent home for CDOC. Yeah, I cannot wait to get working on a new home for CDOC Society that kind of just puts that staff in the ground, says we're here to keep doing what we do and what we do well, thanks to all of you. I have a little announcement too about comings and goings from Team CDOC. So for the past two years, Sarah Tiemann has been our research assist assistant. And as I put in her exit interview, she absolutely killed it. And she got a very prestigious National Science Foundation graduate research fellowship position. So she's leaving us, we're sad to say, uh, but happy to say she's going to get her PhD at the University of Washington. So thank you, Sarah. And replacing her is Catherine Lowe, who likes to be called Cat, who has a master's degree from Florida Atlantic University Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. She's already published three peer reviewed papers, has extensive field research experience, and very extensive statistical and analytical skills. So we're really happy to welcome you, Cat, to the team. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Kat, can't wait to meet you. Uh, you landed at a good home here, for sure. So, uh, hey, I would just love to, to say a, a whale-sized thank you to all of you who, who took the time to, to be with us tonight. And, and a salmon-sized thank you. Oh, a salmon-sized, yes. <laughs> the salmon is bigger than the whale. I love it. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, there's people here from, from 20 states that signed in and British Columbia. And, you know, everyone you've seen on the screen tonight is just deeply in love with the Salish Sea. And I imagine you all are as well. And it, it's, it's really touching to see the support it's coming. Like if, yeah. if you contributed, that's awesome. If you just took the time to, 
to spend the time with us. That also feels really good. So, so thank you uh, for that. And I would like everyone to, uh, you know, grab your insulated wine glass, your, your pint of Southern resident killer whale beer, your uh, decade old uh, clean sea dot clean canteen here and nice fill with whatever nice beverage relic. nice relic <laughs> so uh here's a toast to the to the sailor sea and 22 years of the sea dot society thank you Ooh, thank you thank you cheers thank you everyone and we michelle and i at least we'll be staying on for a little while if you have any chats or chats questions throw it in the chat we'll be on and i don't know about you guys but i'm feeling like playing with a little bit of play-doh and I'm oh, wondering if Justin had a little bit of help with him at home uh, doing all it. those cute videos. What do you think? Let's see. Mama, I'm coming home. 